بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إنك أنت العليم الحكيم um, Welcome to the Friday حلقة uh, at Abu Hurairah Center where we uh, take some kind of a thematic journey through the Quran and we have come to uh, Surah Yunus alayhi salam, uh, Surah number 10 in the Quran. And uh, we started last Friday with an introduction on the Surah and I think we covered the first page. So we will carry on inshallah. Just to re-emphasize here, the central, um, what appeared to be the central theme in the Surah is the concept of belief and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iman, the concept of Iman in Allah, His oneness, and his right to be worshipped, and the fact that he's the Lord, the creator, the sustainer of the universe, and uh, that he sent down revelation. So that seems to be the most central of these notions, is that the Quran is uh, a, a divine revelation that is full of wisdom, that contains wisdom, and thus this wisdom will be clarified in the surah. The, the, the height of this wisdom is actually uh, understanding, acknowledgement, and belief in, and embracing uh, the 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 oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His sole right to be worshipped, and then uh, there are reflections on the uh, natural world around us. Uh, there is a lot of arguments against uh, disbelief and rejection of faith. So. I believe we reached verse number seven, where Allah subhanahu wa says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا وَرَضُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَطْمَأَنُّوا بِهَا وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا غَافِلُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Verse number seven and eight. Allah says, those who don't look forward to our meeting, and they are satisfied, they are content. So they are, they've become, they've grown to be happy with this world, with this worldly life. Despite all of its, again, inconsistencies, uh, despite its temporary nature, despite the fact that it, it is of low quality, and this is why it's called dunya, it is of low qual quality inherently, because it's a test, it's not a place of dwelling. Uh, and they have become very accustomed to it, to the point that they find their a sense of uh, resting, peace, and, 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 uh, and, and, and belonging in this life, uh, these people, and, and they are unconscious of our signs. They are unconscious. And obviously no one gets attached to this dunya unless they are unconscious of their reality, unless they are unconscious of the nature of this world. Uh, so basically it's their nefs or their ego. It does what it does best, which, which is attachment to whatever it sees or whatever it experiences. So it becomes attached to it. Whereas, and, and this is because this nafs is, um, is, is unconscious of the other dimensions of existence. And that's again, the, our spiritual nature, our hearts, which have some sort of a peek into the unseen world, which knows that reality, reality is bigger than what we can only perceive with our senses. So Allah says for those people, their abode or their final destination will be the hellfire. And that's, that's something that they would, Earn, that would they would have earned or basically eventually uh, they would earn this place and they would which is the hellfire and they would end up being in it because again they acted in denial to their true human nature which is based and established in belief then Allah shows the opposite those who have believed and done righteous deeds, thus they remain loyal to Allah. They remain true to their pure human nature. Allah increases them in iman, increases them in faith. And that shows that once you put your trust in Allah, especially when it comes to faith and iman, uh, it's not you who figures out everything. Actually, Allah gently guides you and Allah opens up ways for you and Allah provides you with insights and guidance. So Allah will help you navigate this world. As long as you, again, believe and you, you put your trust in Allah and you do your best. Uh, so, so Allah first says, Allah guides them 
because because of their faith, because of their iman. Again, so it's it's a stance. You take the first stance, and Allah subhanahu wa taala responds more generously. Then Allah says, under under them the rivers of paradise in the gardens of bliss will, you know, run uh, underneath. And that's a description of paradise. Allah then describes their state in verse number 10. دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامُ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The dua, their, their supplication, what they're going to say, what are they going to say? How do they spend their time? Because this is a question that might come to, to some of us, is what do the people in paradise do? Well, what they actually do most of the time is they celebrate the glory of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, يُلْهَمُونَ التَّسْبِيحَ كَمَّا يُلْهَمُ أَحَدُكُمُ النفس. That they are inspired with mentioning the name of Allah. It becomes so effortless uh, in their experience, just and almost, you know, automatic, just as breathing is automatic to you. Why? Because there's nothing more beautiful than engaging with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something we are offered in this world. But again, because of the state of ghafla, unconsciousness, we are not experiencing it. We're failing. We, we block ourselves from that experience. The people of paradise, this will be the apex of their experience. And that this is why all the time, da'wahum fiha subhanakallahum, all the time they are doing tasbih. They're saying, subhanallah, how, 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 glor how, glo how glorious Allah is. And how perfect he is. وَتَحِيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ When they meet, when they greet, they say salam, peace. Again, that which is one of the names of Allah. And that's what makes it beautiful. And that's what makes it impactful. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And any kind of, let's say, any uh, speech that they make or any conversation they engage in or any even uh, batch of dua that they make, like they're mentioning Allah, they would conclude it with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, which is usually translated as praise be to Allah, but it's much more than that. It just says, it's a statement, it's a profound statement of the perfection of Allah and how glad you are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and how thankful and appreciative you are of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made things unfold, how he designed the world and he designed everything and then how he blessed you with paradise. We ask Allah to make us from among these people. Then Allah says, Here now Allah starts um, exposing the arguments of those who reject faith. If Allah were to give people or bring uh, bad or, or harm to people or evil to people, just as they... Uh, uh, in the same speed they expect good to come to them from Allah, then they would have died. What that basically means, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to punish people for their uh, misbehavior and for their disbelief and for their sins, in the same way he rewards them for whatever good they do, they would have been dead. They would have been gone long ago. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he do? He holds back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is patient. He's halim. He gives people time. He gives them a chance and a second chance so that hopefully they would repent. Uh, so again, that shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish people immediately. He actually gives them a lot of chances. Whereas when people do good, Allah brings through it more good into their life. Then Allah exposes something about humans and about human nature and why. And this is about the psychology of disbelief. Allah says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرُّ دَعَانَا لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّهُ كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَا لِلْمُسْرِفِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, and if man is touched by harm, by pain, by calamity, then a person turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all states. You, you recognize something awakens within you. At times of hardship, you know, this life that you grow attached to, and that you become, you feel entitled to uh, reap its, you know, blessings, and you think you deserve, you know, that this life treats you well. Then, when uh, again, this is a state of ghafla, it's a state of unconsciousness, because that's not what life is. But people, you know, grow into this state. So when when hardship comes, when a calamity, when a disruption in the circumstances takes place. 
what humans do, they are thrown out of balance and they realize their fragile attachment to this world and that the, the, the mentality or the, the, the mindset through which they, 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 uh, they relate to the world is actually not, a, is not, a, is not the right strategy. So something within them awakens. So this creates an opening and something within them awakens and that's their deeper nature. That's their hearts, the spiritual side of who we are. That awakens and knows that there is no uh, escape or knows that there is no solution except with Allah. So the knowing, this fitra, this primordial innate knowledge and belief and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awakens and it's, and, 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 and it's activated. So the person turns to Allah, Allah, it's, you're the only one who can help me, help me out. And this is why they say there is no atheist on a, cra on a crashing plane, on a crashing plane, yeah. So, so Allah says, yeah, the person will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what their state is. But then when we uh, remove that hardship or that calamity or this disruption, what happens, a per the person goes back to their older state as if you know they never turned to Allah so they go back to unconsciousness and they start to live their life as if Allah doesn't even exist as if there this life doesn't have a deeper meaning so Allah says Allah describes these people as musrifin these they've squandered what Allah has given them and they are abusing you know the gifts and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and Allah says their actions, their style, this style of theirs has been beautified to them. Why? Again, it's unconsciousness. It's the ghafla of our uh, minds and our nafs that makes us blind to the truth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws attention to previous nations, how they were destroyed because they disbelieved. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us after them to be here on earth and to live. Um, and, and this should be a reminder that you're not going to stay here forever. You're going to leave just, just like the people who were before. You're just taking your turn and eventually you will depart. So just be mindful of this. And then Allah mentions some of the arguments of the people who, to whom Prophet Muhammad was sent. And this includes the people in his lifetime and then subsequent generations who again see the truth in the revelation and they insist on leaving it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا أَتِي بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّلَ So when our verses, our beautiful, clear verses, words, are related to them, those who don't look forward to the meeting of Allah, that's the prism of their thinking. They would say, oh, bring another Qur'an, like we're not, we're not satisfied with this, we're not, we're not happy with this, with this book, so bring something else get some kind of other guidance because that doesn't suit us. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, the reason for this, and, and, and this might sound like sometimes, you know, people who re reject the truth might seem to be on the surface. Uh, they seem to be making some logical arguments. But again, th they are, you know, logic, pure logic almost, almost doesn't exist because we humans see things through perspective. And our desires, our emotions, uh, create sort of create a spill, a spill around uh, uh, around our 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 logic. So this is why we have paradigms of thinking, because thinking cannot be absolute. So we have to think within a framework, uh, and within a prism, or within some axioms, assumptions, basic assumptions, and they govern how we think and what is the outcome of our thinking. So again, so if someone says, oh, this is logical, in pure logic, this doesn't make sense, etc., etc., especially when it comes to revelation, then just it's it's a matter of these people being stuck in a specific framework or paradigm. And then again, when you are within that frame, you're blinded to everything else. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. This is how it, their attitude is beautified to them. And uh, yeah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts exposing some of their arguments and their states that they reject faith or belief in Allah, they start worshipping something else. And even those who seem to be uh, worshipping nothing, like atheists who, who, who claim that there is no deity, there's no creator, and there's no supreme being, they still end up worshipping something and, and, and because they have to devote their life to something. Um, it, it could be anything, it could be personal desires, 
it could be a, an ambitions it could be uh, some kind of cause that you wrap your life around or it could be even a matter of um, you know fighting against some, something of find finding a resentment and living through it so humans designed they can only be to be only purposeful you have to find a purpose for your life and that's basically you know people end up worshiping if they don't choose to worship allah the only one the true god the only the only one who deserves to be worshiped they are automatically and inevitably going to end up worshiping something else and they would revere it so some people worship science these days and again so they go overboard with science and they think science can answer all questions and that there's no mistakes in science and obviously any expert in any field knows that this is not the case then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the reality of humans in verse number 19 that people were upon one state which is why a state of belief the original state but then eventually departing from faith and from believing in the one true God this was a subsequent stage this was uh, something that is, it was not the normal state of humans. It was something that came about later on. It occurred at a later stage in the, in the experience of humanity. Yeah. So there are many arguments still uh, with regards to um, those who argue against, again, this divine book that is full of wisdom and revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings again the concept of how the what is the dynamics of ghafla, unconsciousness, that people in their comfort, you know, state, they live, they, they get, they take themselves too seriously. They, they it, it becomes all about themselves. They think they are the center of the world and everything is about them. And 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 basically that's not a good place to be in. So that because that blinds them, they become unconscious, they become they feel entitled. And it becomes all about, you know, fulfilling their desires, enjoying themselves, etc. And they forget the concept of purpose. They sort of uh, close the door on their spiritual nature, which is the main component of who they are, where their identity really originates, where it comes from. So they close the door in that, they shut the door on that, and they don't allow it in. And they live with only a small segment of who they are. And that's, again, what is called the nafs, the ego. And... Uh, this is problematic because, again, this is a state of blindness. You are living on, on a fraction of the full experience of life. Uh, yeah, so, so Allah says when they are riding the sea, the ocean, and then they're enjoying their ride, then all of a sudden a storm comes about, and then they think they are going to die. They turn to Allah. They will turn to Allah in all sincerity. And that's because, again, this uh, ego shatters and what remains what emerges is the 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 avoided or the ignored <clears throat> overlooked part of who we are which is our reality our deeper part and that's our souls comes about and the soul knows it has it has this inherent primordial knowledge of allah so it turns to allah and knows that no one can save it but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but allah says then after that after they, you know, this whole, uh, let's say, trial is over and people go back to normal, they're even going to switch back to their nafs or their ego and they will forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, again and they will start actually, you know, misbehaving. Then Allah gives a beautiful analogy about life in verse number 24, which is very powerful and very profound. And that's basically Allah says the reality of this life the, the, is, is just like rain that we send down from the skies and it mixes with the with the soil and then the earth gives birth or growth to vegetation whatever like vegetables fruits things that uh, humans and animals can eat from and they sustain that's their sustenance and when everything is so beautiful green and wonderful uh, and and people think that yeah, this is ours, right? We have, we're not going like this vegetation, this kind of beauty around is ours and there is no way we can go to times of deprivation. Again, people get attached to the world. People get attached to money. People get attached to positions and they think, oh, they've become very rich that there's no way or oh, life is going to always be like that. Oh, 
and, and, and these mechanisms of nature that Allah put here as if they work for them by their command. They think they have full control over that. But again, this is just a delusional, temporary delusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then eventually all of that vegetation and greenery is actually at times of drought is just going to, uh, you know, decline. It's going to go dry, uh, turn, turn pale and lose its beauty and, 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 and um, lose its glamour. Or Allah would send a storm to, to, to burn that and destroy it. And in one day, overnight, things would just disappear. Um, yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that thus we make these signs very clear for humans just to wake up, for them to reflect and, and wake up. And then Allah says what he actually, he's calling humanity to is Dar es Salaam. Verse number 25, Allah says, Wallahu yad'u ila Dar es Salaam. Allah is inviting us to the land, to the life of eternal peace, where there's no destruction where there's no end to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a glimpse into the hereafter, Allah says, for those who have done well, because really what, what, what religion is about is actually doing well, is about observing truth, justice, compassion, forgiveness, um, putting everything where it truly belongs. You just act morally. You do the right, you take the right course of action. That's what religion is really about. And if there are mistakes and inappropriate, you know, examples, then they are either mistakes from the people who, uh, you know, uh, ascribe to religion, or they are a misreading of something that is true. But again, we are seeing it through a lens of our desires, our ambitions, our cultures, and we put ourselves in the position of, of a judge. And we think we have a higher moral, moral ground and we are, qualified to make a judgment when actually the problem is with the prisms and the axioms on which our view are, our view is based. Yeah, so Allah says the people in paradise, uh, those who do good will actually get the best, which is paradise, and even more from Allah, a bonus from Allah. And they would not have to go through the pain and the disgrace. These are the people in paradise who will dwell there eternally. And those who have earned the sins, and it shows it's hard work to go against human nature and against Allah and actually earn sins and live a life of sin uh, and immorality. Uh, so Allah says, then they will receive exactly what they put forth, one for one. And they will be disgraced with humiliation and they would have no protection from the punishment of Allah and their faces would be darkened these people will dwell in the hellfire forever. Allah says on the day of judgment and afterwards that Allah is going to have an argument with them on the day of judgment. When he brings them up, he's going to say, you know, where are your partners? The ones that you worship besides Allah, the purposes in life that you lived for. Where are they? The things that you thought were going to make you eternal or going to make you happy. Where are those? Then Allah says the reality in the hereafter is that everyone is going to verify and see in, in complete nakedness, the reality of what they put forth in this dunya, in this life. So there'd be no excuses, oh, I didn't know about this, or I just, you know, I made a wrong judgment, or I was just, you know, influenced by so-and-so or by my desires, etc. Allah says, Every self, every person will actually come to see the naked reality of what they you know did in in in, the, in life then Allah draws our attention to the fact that he's the lord he's the creator the source of existence he is the originator the author of this world and he's the one who provides so Allah brings this concept of lordship and that because that's the natural because this this is obvious and the natural conclusion of that is that you should live for that source of being you came from him and eventually we're going to return to him. So you should make your life for him because that was the point for your creation. The reason you were created is actually, uh, you were created as a manifest manifestation of the beauty of the names and attributes of Allah. And you were meant to make them a reality in this life, make them a reality in your own life. And this is why you were given choice. This was your test. Um, so you just took this gift of life and you did something completely, something else with it 
which was you were not meant to do in 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 uh, from a moral stand uh, standpoint from from a religious stand from a spiritual standpoint so again so you're going to pay for that then yeah so there is then there is defense of the quran and ex exposing why the disbelievers uh, reject the truth and that's because of their arrogance And there's another mention on the day of judgment again as to what's going to happen yeah then there is another mention of the justice of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that the quran comes with truth verse number 53 they ask you they really inquire is it really true i say yes indeed and subhanallah like this is um like this this is one of the rare places where allah commands the prophet ﷺ to swear by allah e wa rabbi say indeed wallahi by allah it is the truth so a lot of reference to the to the hereafter and then what i want to arrive to is Basically, Allah says, Allah inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard, verse number 55. Indeed, to Allah belongs everything that's in the heavens and the earth. Allah inna wa'ad Allahi haqq, walakinna akhtarahum la ya'lamun. Indeed, the promise of Allah, the appointment with Allah is true. But most of them don't know. It's not like they don't know that they are ignorant. They never heard of that. They don't know by choice. This is ignorance by choice, which is ghafla, which is you choose to ignore that you choose not to look into this you choose to live a lifestyle that makes you blind to this so that you can forget about it uh, he's the one who gives life and gives death he takes away life and you are going to return to him so if you are going to return to him you better just prepare yourself you know plan long term then that's what i believe is the heart of the surah uh, two verses here verse number 57 and 58 so Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad ja'atkum maw'idatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. O humanity. Allah, that, that, that's the communication between Allah and, 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 and humanity. Very simple, very caring, very compassionate and sincere and honest. Allah says, O humanity, a reminder, uh, an eye opener has come to you from your Lord who cares about you, who wants good for you. And it contains healing to the ailments and the problems and the doubts you have in your chests. And it has guidance and mercy for the believers. So if you accept it, it ends up being guidance and mercy. And it's going to bring you mercy in this life and in the next. That's what Allah invites you to. That's really what he's calling you to. So don't just create, don't make up any stories, any other stories. That's the gist of it. Then Allah says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, O oh Muhammad, if they are going to rejoice, the, the true reason for being joyful and happy is actually this blessing from Allah that He showed you the truth, that He has actually informed you of the purpose behind your creation and where, where your destiny is going to be and how you can attain the best of destiny. That's it. That's, that's, so this is the message, the core message of the Quran. And this is wisdom. This is, the, the, this is pure wisdom. And this is something that resonates, as we said, with the nature of humans, which is our innate primordial filter or state, uh, which, which is built in us. Okay, I, I, I find it good to stop here because Allah is going to talk about uh, the difference between those who disbelieve and those who believe and what's going to happen to them. Then Allah will take us in uh, a couple of stories or a few stories of prophets and messengers to show how their people disbelieved or believed and what would be the end of each one of them. So, yeah, since it's uh, just an, an online halaqa again, I prefer to keep it around half an hour so it doesn't get overwhelming and uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's easily digestible as, 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 uh, as I believe. 
So Jazakumullah Khairan for joining us and hope to see you inshallah next Friday. And I think next Friday we're going to have our conference, our online conference. So you are invited inshallah to uh, log in, join us and follow the inshallah the uh, the, the posters and the uh, latest information on our winter conference this year. We have uh, uh, quite a variety this year of guests from different parts of the world. So looking forward, inshallah, to seeing you then. Jazakumullah khairan wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.